Hi guys, welcome to this breakdown of the knockout that we saw Tom Breeze inflict upon KB Bolhar. And that was in UFC Fight Night Moraes versus San Hagen. That was uh, October 11th. Uh, it's also called UFC Fight Night 179, UFC on ESPN Plus 37, or UFC Fight Island 5 if you're going to look this fight up. So um, it was an interesting fight. And I, I mainly want to point this one out because I really enjoyed just the, the technical precision of, of what Breeze did with his jab here. So a bunch of points on how he could turn this jab into a, a, a punch that is so devastatingly powerful that it knocks the guy out. And, and again, don't, don't give me that semantics arguments. Yeah, it's a knockdown, it's not a knockout. I know that. I understand that. Get over it. And the, the, all joking aside... The point is this, um, you want to have stopping power in your techniques. And and even today, a lot of guys still say, yeah, but the jabs, you know, it's it, it's not strong enough uh, as far as, the, as punching goes in, in the, the UFC or in MMA uh, in 2020. That doesn't work as well. You need the other techniques, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no nonsense. And this proves it that, I mean, a good solid jab, well executed, has a tremendous amount of power. You just need to practice good technique. So... What does that mean? A bunch of points. First point, I want you to watch the way that Breeze here is going to go into the jab. So watch the footwork. He does a little bit of a hop forward and it kind of looks like he'll just stop. You can see that his upper body is not moving. He's not leaning. There's nothing moving at all. Both hands are standing very stationary as well. So nothing gives away his intent. It looks very much like he might just as well hop straight back as opposed to what he does. As soon as both feet land, he's going to explode into that jab, right? So he's pushing off that back leg and he drives himself forward and accelerates. So that's the first key. This is the stretch reflex. Now, if you don't know what that is, a very easy way to uh, understand it is that stand up straight, squat down, and then jump straight up. It's called a vertical jump and, and see how high you get. And, and very basic, just, just squat down and immediately jump as high as you can. Now, do it again. And then squat down, wait in this lowered position for three seconds, and then try to explode into your jump. And you'll notice that you will not jump as high. As high sorry. And it's gonna, it's, it won't even be a contest. It's going to be a really, really crappy jump, that second one. That is because you took the elasticity out of uh, the, the muscles, meaning that the elastic effect kind of like snapping a rubber band where you pull it first and you let it snap our muscles our body has similar um, capabilities i'm oversimplifying just so you guys understand so this is how good footwork can work not always but you can use it that way by bouncing lightly so you you see that he's going to have a little bit of a shock here and a little bit of a bend into the knees and he's using that bend to explosively contract his, mainly his leg muscles and drive forward. So that is that is the main reason why you can accelerate like this. It starts from here below from the legs. Next, moving on, I want you to watch here his hands, uh, sorry, his right hand and his right foot. See the timing between those two. What you'll notice is that from here he goes forward and you'll see that here he lands with his foot so his foot is landing and he's almost there with his fist when his weight settles on the ground on his right foot so this is the foot touching down the toes touch and the next frame you'll see that he's going to land with his weight on that foot as he lands then the punch lands at the same time so the weight transfer onto the onto the lead leg is coinciding perfectly with the impact that means that you have two things You've got the extension of the arm generating power and his whole body weight going forward at the same time. And his body weight lands and basically stops and he uses that to land the punch. So the timing is very good. This means that it's not just the arm punching, it is the entire body weight. And, and watch how he springs forward. I mean, he's generating a lot of force with that jab by doing it that way. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, moving on, he lands the jab, and you'll see here that uh, I mean, Bolar goes down. Guy's really out of it. Uh, that was a powerful jab. And what I really liked as well is instead of what a lot of guys do, which is Joko, they go straight forward, they dive again into the guard. You're going to see Breeze here is going to go off to the side and get a better position. So there's no risk here of getting tangled up into some sort of ground fight or uh, that, that Bolar can then 
you know, take his time to recover by closing his guard and keeping the fight there. No, no, no. He's off to the side, a little bit of bounce here, and then it's going to rain hammer fists until the ref steps in, right? So just always have a plan to follow up that is more than just I'm going to rush the guy and hope to knock him out. That's not a plan. That's, that's amateurish fighting. And again, if you're strong and fast, you can get away with a lot of stuff, but expect your opponents to be strong and fast too, right? So moving on to the next point. Same thing, the jab lands. Now I want you to watch this. This is really good technique. You've got the fist, the elbow, the shoulder, and the back shoulder fully aligned. This is how you generate power. That, com in combination with the forward momentum, stepping forward, that is what creates tremendous power into that jab. So watch it again. You can see here the back shoulder, the lead shoulder, the elbow, and the fist all form a straight line. That means that his arm is structurally supported by his entire upper body. And then the rest of the body moves forward because he's exploding into that footwork. So that generates so much power. And that's how you how you can knock guys down and out with a simple jab. So working on this alignment is difficult. It takes time and practice. And what you'll see often is a lot of guys, instead of keeping the shoulders aligned like this, they'll have the lead shoulder a little bit off to the side. That means that you shorten the reach of your jab. Instead of, he, instead of landing the punch, you, you'll pull short, which will mean that you instinctively will have to take either a bigger step forward. Oh, I need an arrow for that one. So instinctively take a bigger step forward with your lead foot, or what a lot of guys do as well to compensate is lean forward. And then leaning forward is going to expose your head to the other guy and taking a closer step with your lead foot does the same thing. So using the full reach of your technique is a key skill that you have to master if you want to be effective. And, and you see Tom Breeze here doing that perfectly. So, and then I want to make another point again, you see knockdown and then the follow-up, it's fine. Okay, next point, I want you to watch and you'll see it, the left hand of Breeze here as he throws a punch. You'll see that I'm going to go slow. So the left hand is over here. Watch where it goes as the punch is thrown. Boom, lands. It hardly moves, right? Notice that the punch is launched. You can see that left hand hardly moves at all. We can argue a little bit. You could argue that, you know, he's picking up his elbow, which should be a little bit lower, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm not going to nitpick that to death too much. The main point is that his left hand is in a defensive position. It is there to defend him should he get countered, should there be like a, a right hand, or a hook, overhand, whatever coming at him, or he can use it to throw his own left hand if he wants to. So it's in a defensive position compared to a lot of guys, instead of keeping that left hand over here, it's over here, it's over here, it's over here, even over there, just, just flailing all over the place where it doesn't do anything useful. Today, you hardly ever see boxers do that, have that non-striking hand be all over the place. Why? Because they get punished for it. In MMA, you still see that way too much that guys don't cover up correctly. So keep your hand in a, your non-striking hand in a defensive position if you do these kind of techniques because that way you're much safer and at the same time you can follow up however you want and you'll notice here that breeze is going to go off a little bit to the side here after the impact so it lands the jab and you see he's going to step a little bit off to the side which is again good practice see how he's not moving off to his right so that puts him away from any direct counters uh, i'll come back here so this is a straight line the arrow is a uh, it's uh, the line that Bullard can use to counter back. The jab lands, and you can see that here, Tom is stepping off that line, so he's inherently safe. So what does that mean? I want to point that out because this shows uh, one of the things that I've said many times, and that is you want to have defense before, during, and after your techniques. Not just one or the other, but you want to have everything at the same time, right? So once again, you can admire this perfect technique here. It's it's so rare that you see such a gorgeous jab here. It's so well done with the whole body weight stepping uh, into it. The timing with that with that lead foot combined with the, the punch here coming in perfectly aligned from the shoulders all the way to the fist. I mean, everything just so well done, which means that it lands flush. And and the best way to to prove that is this here. Watch the reaction. I mean, I want you, oh, that's a little bit too far. I want you to watch Bullhar's face, see what happens. 
So we know what's going to come next. So watch this. So a little bit of footwork here. Watch Bolar's face. See nothing happening. The jab is on the way. He picks up his right hand. His head does not move. Nothing moves. Contact. And he hasn't moved at all. That's it. So this is how you set up a really good jab with good technique, footwork and everything. And then the other guy doesn't have a chance to even react if you time it well. Again, it's more complicated than that, but you can see that it can work if you get those things right. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, hit the subscription, bell, notification, all that kind of stuff. Uh, follow me on social media. There's also obviously the Patreon with a lot of exclusive videos there. Uh, we've got the, the podcast that's, uh, that started up again, so you can listen to those episodes as well. If you have questions for the podcast or for here for uh, video suggestions, best way to reach me is to go to my Facebook page and hit me up with a message or a comment there, and then I'll see what I can do. Okay, guys, that's it. Take care. Keep on training.